Welcome everyone! Ever wonder if dragons really soar the skies, or if unicorns really have silver blood? Or that howling during the full moon is a werewolf? Well, if you're like me, I've always been fascinated with such creatures. Join me now to learn the origins of these stories and many more in my new series, Folklore, Legends, and Myths. If you're new here, welcome! Each week I create a new look using Color Street nail strips, and in this series, we are going to uncover the legends and find out why they still enchant us to this day. If you're interested in unique color combos and want to join us on this mythological journey, I would highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. With about 70% of our blue planet covered in water, it's no wonder centuries ago the oceans were believed to hide mysterious creatures, including sea serpents and mermaids. Merfolk are the marine version of a half-human, half-animal legend that have captivated human imagination for ages. One source in the Arabian Nights describes mermaids of having moon faces and hair like a woman's, but their hands and feet were in their bellies and they have tails like a fish. The word mermaid is compound of the Old English mer meaning sea and maid meaning a girl or young woman. They are conventionally depicted as beautiful with long flowing hair. The male equivalent of the mermaid is a merman. Also a familiar figure in folklore and legend, although traditions about the sighting of mermen are less common than those of mermaids. They are generally assumed to coexist with their female counterparts. The male and female collectively are sometimes referred to as merfolk or merpeople. Mermaids appear in folklore of many cultures around the world, including Europe, Asia, and Africa. But not all mermaids are the shimmering versions that we may see in pop culture. In fact, those mermaids, which seem to be the combination of the Melsian and Greek mythology, barely skim the surface of the fish-human legend. Many countries and cultures have their own versions of mermaids, from a snake water goddess to a fish with a monkey mouth. Some are benevolent, some ambivalent, and many are openly hostile to poor humans who cross their paths. Mermaids were often associated with misfortune and death, luring sailors off course and even onto the rocky shores. There are also naturalist theories of the origins of mermaids, proposing they derive from the sightings of manatees or seals. The first appearance of mermaids was found painted in caves in the late Stone Age, about 30,000 years ago, when human beings had a strong control of the land and began to sail the seas. The Greek name Siren is related in meaning to a rope, and mermaids would be something like the ones who tie or grab, mainly tempting sailors and enchanting them with their sweetness of song. These songs were irresistible and they fascinated anyone as their melodies were full of promise, hence the literary expression siren song. Throughout history, we can see that such attraction was not only united in the tuneful singing, but also in their femininity. This being was always characterized by living between two worlds, sea and earth, and between life and death because we also find mermaids as funeral emblems accompanying with their singing to those beginning their journey into the afterlife. They are thought to live very long lives. They are mortal, but have no souls. The first known mermaid story appeared in Assyria in 1000 BC. The goddess Argas, mother of Assyrian queen Demerimus, loved a mortal, a shepherd, and unintentionally killed him. Ashamed, she jumped into the lake and took form of a fish but the waters could not conceal her divine beauty. Therefore, she took the form of a mermaid, human above the waist, fish below. Although the earliest representation of her showed her as a fish with a human head and arm similar to the Babylonian god, there's a modern Greek legend that Alexander the Great's sister, Thelonike, did not die and turned into a mermaid after her death, living in the Aegean. She would ask sailors on any ship she would encounter only one question, is King Alexander alive? And to which the correct answer was, he lives, he reigns, and conquers the world. This answer pleased her, and she would accordingly calm the waters and bid the ship farewell. Any other answer would enrage her, and she would stir up a terrible storm, dooming the ship and every sailor on board. 
This legend derives from the writings of an Alexander romance dated to the Ottoman Greek period, first printed in 1680. Though the first writing text talking about mermaids is in the Odyssey, but as a legend or oral story, we find more mermaids in other parts of the world. In the Odyssey, Homer explains how the hero Ulysses had himself tied to the mast of his boat in order to listen to the mermaid song without being in danger, although he is not the only one who managed to be uninjured. The Argo ship crew commanded by Jason was also unharmed. They managed to escape from the bewitching melodies thanks to a great musician called Orpheus, son of Apollo, who traveled with them and who with a magical song managed to avoid the mermaids. I mentioned the legend of mermaids can be found in many parts of the world. Let's dive into some of them. In Ireland, a magic cap worn by mermaids or marrows enables them to live under the water. Female marrows with their long green hair are similar to traditional siren. Male marrows, however, are considered hideous and frightening, much more fish than man. And they are cruel, so cruel that the marrow women were said to often have relationship with human men. Their offsprings might have scales and web between their fingers. Marrows frequently tired of the land and tried to find a way to return the sea, with or without their human family. Mermaids appear in British folklore as unlucky omens, both foretelling disasters and provoking it. The Norman Chapel in Durham Castle, built in 1078, has what is probably the earliest surviving artistic depiction of a mermaid in England. It can be seen on the south-facing capital above one of the original Norman stone pillars. Several variants of the ballad Sir Patrick depict a mermaid speaking to the doomed ships. In some versions, she tells them they will never see land again. In others, she claims they are near shore which they are wise enough to know means the same thing. Mermaids can also be a sign of approaching rough weather, and some have been described as monstrous in size up to 2,000 feet. One story tells of a fisherman who carried a stranded mermaid back to the sea and was rewarded with location of treasure. Another recounts a tale of a baby mermaid who stole a doll from a human little girl, but was rebuked by her mother and sent back to the girl with a gift of a pearl necklace to atone for the theft. A third story tells of a fishing family that made regular gifts of apples to a mermaid and was rewarded with prosperity. In Scottish mythology, selkies are gentle creatures who live their lives as seals while they're in the water and shed their skin to become human on land but they're frequently equated with mermaids because of the Gaelic stories they're associated with seas or maids of the waves, which is a special mermaid whose lower half is a salmon. Selkie's legend usually ends in tragedy. The folklore's almost inevitably feature a Selkie seal skin getting stolen, the Selkie getting married and having children with a human, only to later find the old seal skin and getting called back to the sea. In France, a feminine spirit can be found in many medieval folk stories. The Malcine has a serpent tail and occasionally sports wings. Not only in France, but Germany, Luxembourg, and Albania all have varying tales of the Malcine. But the general legend describes her as a willful maiden who attempts revenge on her father on behalf of her mother, only to be punished by her mother with a serpent's tail. The Melcine is especially connected with France as a royal French house claims to be descendants of her. Image of this sea fairy can be seen all over the world, especially on the coffee cup at Starbucks, which is a Melcine-like mermaid in its logo. Over in Japan, there are vastly differences with the Western version of the beautiful mermaid. This monster can be found in Japanese folklore. It's described as a giant fish with a human face and a monkey's mouth, and sometimes even horns and fangs. In a serious conflict of interest, anyone who eats one will have eternal youth and beauty, but catching one often brings terrible storms and misfortune to entire villages. Korea is bound on three sides by sea. In some villages near the sea in Korea, there are mysterious stories of mermaids. One story goes the mayor of a small town saved four captured mermaids from a fisherman and set them free back into the sea. There's another tale of a princess from the kingdom of Narada, a mythical undersea kingdom of mermaids. 
Then there's a tale that concerns a mermaid named Sea-like, who warns fishermen of impending storms by singing and throwing rocks into the sea. The island residents believe her to be a goddess of the sea and that she can predict the weather. Most tales of mermaids are passed down by spoken tales and pictures, and in New Zealand's folklore, they can also be seen in carvings. A little more intense than a mermaid, the New Zealand guardian of the sea. It is a human head and a body of a very long fish, as well as a long tubular tongue that is often blamed to destroy canoes and swallowing large quantities of fish. Found in some African folk stories, the water spirit Mamiwata is sometimes described as a mermaid, sometimes as a snake charmer, and occasionally a combination of both. The legend of Mamiwata made its way to the Americas during the Atlantic slave trade. Although she can sometimes take human form, she is never fully human. She is closely associated with healing, fertility, and sex. The idea of mermaids in Brazil comes from the tale of Lara, the Lady of the Waters. Lara is originally known as a water snake, but through folklore became an immortal woman with green eyes and brown skin who is known to lure sailors to her underwater palace, where they become her lovers. Lara is blamed for many accidents in the Amazon, especially where men disappear. But probably the least like a traditional version of a mermaid, thin folk of Norway are shapeshifters of the sea considered nomads who can alternate between living on the land and their ancestral underwater home, finfolk tend to have a relationship with humans. They often abduct humans for their spouses, but make them more as servants than partners. Finfolk also have an affinity for silver, and one might be able to escape their grasp by, by throwing a silver coin their way. Historical sightings of mermaids have been reported throughout history, such as those reported by Christopher Columbus in January of 1493 during his exploration of the Caribbean. Columbus claims he spotted three mermaids in the Dominican Republic waters. In reality, it's believed to be manatees. During Henry Hudson's second voyage on June 15, 1608, members of his crew reported sightings of mermaids in the Arctic Ocean as well as a logbook of Blackbeard, an English pirate, records that he instructed his crew on several voyages to steer away charted waters, which he called enchanted a fear of merfolk or mermaids, which Blackbeard himself and members of the crew reported seeing. These sightings are often recounted and shared by sailors and pirates who believe that mermaids brought bad luck and would bewitch them in giving up their gold and dragging them to the bottom of the sea. In August 2009, after dozens of people reported seeing mermaids leaping out of the bay waters and doing aerial tricks, the Israel coastal town offered a $1 million reward for its proof of existence. In February 2012, work on two reservoirs in Zimbabwe stopped when workers refused to continue, saying that mermaids had hounded them away from the sites. There have been scientific inquiries about these creatures, including a biological assessment of the unlikelihood of the supposed evolutionary biology of mermaids on the popular marine science website Deep Sea News. Here are five of the primary reasons why mermaids do not fit in the current evolution understanding. Thermoregulation, adaptions of regulating body heat, evolution mismatch, reproductive challenges, digestive differences between mammals and fish, and lack of evidence. With all of these tales of merfolk, mermaids have been a popular subject of art and literature in recent centuries. The most famous would be Hans Christian Andersen's literary fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, written in 1836 in Copenhagen, Denmark. The tale is slightly different than the Disney version we all know. The main difference comes in the end, when the prince marries the princess from the neighboring kingdom. Not because he's tricked, but because he actually loves the princess. The Little Mermaid is heartbroken. Now we think she could turn back into a mermaid and return to the sea. But if she wants to become a mermaid again, she has to take the sea witch's dagger, kill the prince, let his blood drip on her feet, and then she will return as a mermaid. But the Little Mermaid cannot bring herself to kill him. She throws herself off the boat and her body dissolves into foam. 
But instead of ceasing to exist, as the sea witch warned, she turns into a luminous and earthbound spirit, a daughter of the air. Because of her selflessness, she is given a second chance to earn her own soul by doing good deeds for mankind for 300 years, and will one day rise up to heaven. In Copenhagen, a bronze statue of the mermaid depicting the mermaid becoming human is displayed on a rock by the waterside of the promenade. Based on Andersen's fairy tale, it has been in Copenhagen, Denmark since August of 1913, and there are copies in 13 other locations around the world, almost half of them being in North America. While there's no evidence that mermaids exist outside this folklore, reports of mermaid sightings continue to this present day. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Folklore, Legends, and Myths, and we'll see you for the next one.